well. But we'll start with the news of the day. Uh, and I'm going to take the first crap, crap, crack. <laughs> Starting off well, Jeff. Starting off well. Hi. Okay. Hi. Hi, I'm Kevin, a professional broadcaster, diploma from BCIG. <laughs> Emily Castongay is the new assistant general manager of the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, she is the first woman hired uh, in the role. Uh, the Canucks have also hired Rachel Dory in an analytics role since last we spoke to you about the Vancouver Canucks. So... Formerly a sports agent, she represented Alexis Lafreniere. Uh, she also has uh, represented Antoine Roussel when Antoine Roussel signed the controversial contract of the with the Vancouver Canucks, uh, as well as she represented Cedric Paquette. Uh, she was in the Montreal Canadiens general manager search. Nobody mentioned that, but she her name was on the radars, but. Uh, she did not get that. She got this, and um, I'll I'll just start by saying I think that this is um, this is a great hire. I don't know what, any other way to say it. She's got the experience. Uh, Thirty seven years old. She's played Division two hockey. She's a, a former uh, player agent. She's got her pulse on the on the game. I. I think that this these are the type of things that you want in your organized type of people and that you want in the organization. And um, I think this week has felt like a little bit of a breath, breath of fresh air. I'll also, start with... also, just the fact that she is going to be our new like master of the cap and CBAs. So, like the fact that it's going from John Wisebrod to her. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, well, one thing you, one player you did miss there, Kevin, I hope she's got the clutch, uh, the clutch gene that this player has. She was the, also the agent for Marie Philippe Poulin. Oh, that's so, true. Yes. Yes. I, um, I really, I really hope Marie Philippe Poulin's uh, clutch, uh, uh, clutchness is rubbed off on, uh, on, on Caston Gay because it, uh, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, and I also yeah, I just I I it's it's one of those it's it's a good day for the Canucks. I think it just a, there there seems to be a breath of fresh air. She's kind of um I I think one of the stories that she mentioned was she had a one of her final conversations with her her late sister was that she had a uh her, they had a conversation her being in a management position for the Vancouver Canucks. And when Jim Rutherford called, she, she had to listen. And I, you know, um, I think there's a lot of very forward thinking and interesting things that can happen with this hire. Well, I think one thing is, is they, it, as Chris said, um, they're putting her in a, in a spot to succeed. She's come from, come, comes from an agent background. She knows contracts and, and, and and law and all that and it is very de- you have to be very detail oriented to do that so to to give her the portfolio um of like a cba compliance cap management and contract negotiation i think it's fantastic um and i'll get i'll i can i'll get into this a little bit later but it, it, putting people into a, in a position to succeed i think is fantastic and this is something that jim rutherford's doing Devin, what are your thoughts? Uh, obviously, fantastic uh, hire, I think, overall. Uh, just reading her uh, bio and uh, seeing what she's done within uh, within women's hockey, let alone um, on the forefront of uh, a potential first female GM. And uh, obviously, she's got the assistant GM job here. And um, I think it's a fantastic uh, day for women in um, – trying to infiltrate uh, this this men dominated um, uh, area in life and uh, just, just overall I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to uh, to see uh, us as a society going that way and uh, I mean it's, it doesn't even mean that you know uh, yeah I'm, I'm just happy sorry I'm happy for it and uh, just before we move on, uh, another um, now ex-client of hers is uh, Flames' top prospect, Jacob Peltier. 
Interesting. Yeah. She, uh, by the way, a bachelor's degree of finance in 2009, member of the Quebec Bar Association, uh, earned her law degree in 2012 from the University of Montreal. And played four years of NCAA Div Division Hockey at Niagara University. So not She's only can a... she play, she knows her stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, she she's by far way smarter than all four of us combined. Sorry. Yeah. Easily. I, I'd agree. Easily. Uh, us four knuckleheads on here. Yeah. Yeah. Um. And then we had the. I'll, I'll, we'll bring this in, and then I'm. I'm just. I, we'll talk a little bit about the culture part of this. But Rachel Dory was also hired. Um, this one, a, a great, another great hire. I, I'm not nothing to dispute in terms of what she brings. She she has an analytic mind. If you ever listen to the her podcast, the Stefan Gra Staff and Graf podcast, she's very quick witted. Um, which I think will suit her very well in this in this landscape in the Canucks media landscape. Um, with uh, some of the people that she uh, dealing with out here, I think that that's a good fit. Um, I, 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 there was some polarization about that, but I think it's just, I'm, I'm, I think that was mostly people, the idiots being the idiots. I, I, I can't see the, how this is a, a terrible hire. I think it's an, it's a, I, I think bringing someone in for the specifically this role and, and I want to give, I think, you know, this is where Heidi, I'm going to, I'm going to use my old man voice here just for a quick second. You know, those old people like the Jim Rutherford in his 70s, he brings in the young folks that knows the modern times, eh? And this is exactly what Rutherford is doing. Like, he, you know, he, he is in tune with what is needed. He have, seems like a very progressive human being that is putting the right people in the right spot. Well, even, even going back to the hire of Derek Clancy as well, all three of these of these hires are been put in a position to succeed to use their strengths. Derek Clancy was brought in to um, look oversee the scouting side of things and and see what they need, and he has that background. He's been director of play. He was director of player personnel with the pe uh, professional scouting and player personnel with the Penguins. He's been a scout for the Penguins as well. Uh, he was an assistant coach in the ECHL and, a and AHL and the head coach in the ECHL. He's got that background. Rachel Dory has worked in the O. She's worked. She was hot. She worked with the New Jersey Devils for for a stint. She's worked in um, in U Sports for a stint as well. And then yeah, she's been in. Uh, it has got do dove head. Uh, dove headfirst into the analytics side of things. And I think it's, it's fantastic. It, it, it puts her in a position to succeed. And then as you talked about with the, um, with Emily Caston Gay's uh, background, finance degree, law school, perfect for, to, to oversee a lot of the, the cap and, and cap compliance and, and contract negotiation and CBA uh, issues. She's perfect for that. And I think that's, what we're seeing here is uh, Jim Rutherford identifying needs, looking out there for who's who who has the the background to fit to fill the position to take care of those needs, and isn't afraid to um, and is looking and has a a wide uh, search net and is and is bringing in people who may not have gotten the chance in in other spots because of. Well, you you don't a lot of people just uh, just bring in the the people that they know and the people that uh, have been there and done that before. And full props to Rutherford for recognizing that he is one of the main faces of the old boys club, and he's now leading the charge to allowing fresh blood into that group. Yep. Yep. Uh, she interviewed for the lease job too, Devin. She, uh, but they went to a different direction. Uh, totally. yeah. I, I'm sorry. I was on mute as I was trying to talk. Oh, there. sorry, Devin. Uh, <laughs> um, off to a good start here. Uh, no, I, I was just going to say that, uh, they don't be surprised. I mean, if, uh, if these two are going to be climbing the ranks in the Canucks organization as well, uh, Rutherford, 
he's not a young boy anymore. <laughs> I, I don't know how much longer he'll uh, he'll really want to stick in a GM job, and so this could be grooming for the next uh, Canucks hire here. Or Are you saying he's not a uh, pretty GM. chicken? <laughs> uh, Kevin, where's your old man voice? Well, I, I would just <laughs> say that he's not on the young side of life, or maybe looked at on the older side of life. <laughs> And that's exactly how I picture him talking anytime you bring him up. We started our podcast discussing the Canucks hiring, official hiring of Patrick Alvin of general, as general manager. On Wednesday, we started our broadcast. No, on Wednesday, we started our podcast. Of, on Wednesday. The Canucks officially hired Patrick Alvin as their new general manager. We started that podcast with our reaction. Well, we'll get into our contest here in a little bit, uh, but let's get into enough chitter chatter. Let's get at her. Uh, the Vancouver Canucks have hired officially hired Patrick Alvin as their 12th general manager in history. Uh, he, of course, was worked in the Pittsburgh Penguins organization. Uh, he uh, was a director of amateur scouting. Uh, he's worked up through the ranks, and he is the first Swedish-born general manager from the uh, that to be in the NHL. We will get into the Calgary Flames here shortly, but it is sort of the news. It is the news of the day. So. It, we, we can't ignore it just because our focus is on the Flames. It is a, a significant hire. But we will start with Devin. Uh, Devin, how are you feeling that the rival Vancouver Canucks have Patrick Alvin as the general manager? I'm very surprised that they went the Swedish route. That is very off-brand for them. Um, mm. <laughs> no, it's a, it's it, it's good. I, uh, it's, I don't know much about him, uh, but, you know, it, it's it, – Sounds like a great high for him, uh, for the Canucks, and uh, a good opportunity for for him to uh, uh, sharpen his teeth and um, get into the, into general managing in the NHL. So uh, I'll be interested to see how he really, uh, depending on how the things go for the rest of the year, how what he does in this off season, um, what he does at the trade deadline, depending on where the Canucks are at. Uh, I, I, I don't think many people know exactly what type of GM he's going to be. Um, but, uh, I, I, hey, I've, I'm all for new, uh, new people um, getting into uh, new positions as important as a general manager in the NHL. Sean, how are you feeling today? It's good. It's the uh, – Alvin was the, the guy that uh... – Every, everyone sort of thought had the inside track for right from the beginning. Um, he comes from, like, he's got a lot of uh, experience with scouting player personnel. Uh, he was just the assistant GM in um, in Pittsburgh. He was actually the interim GM um, when they when Rutherford stepped aside before they hired on uh, Ron Hextall and, and uh, Brian Burke to take the, over things there. So he, I think he's a he's a great hire and it go, goes along well with uh, uh, all the other hires that uh, Rutherford has done since he took over. Yeah. Uh, so they did the press conference with Patrick Alvin and Jim Rutherford, and uh, amongst the significant quotes that were made, um, a couple of things. Uh, I'll we'll touch on a couple of things that Alvin said, and then there's a couple of things that Rutherford said. That I think it's also very interesting. Alvin said he had a two-hour lunch with the Sedins, um, and I would imagine, and it's uh, that they will be involved in at some point in this organization. Um, I think that that I think is a fair expectation. Uh, the other thing is, um, and this may al go allow us to go down a track. He was asked about Eli Elias Pedersen. Uh, he said he had lunch with Pedersen the day of that draft, and he had schnitzel, and he's a very talented player. Um, I thought it was interesting that Pedersen was the one that we're, was, he was being asked about, not some of the other guys yet, but that was an interesting... Interesting thing. 
Was there anything else from that? You know, I don't know if any anybody, if you guys had a chance to hear the LV and press conference, was there anything that is kind of standing out for you? I, I think part, part and parcel would be how adamant Jim Rutherford was that uh, Alvin is the guy because I think there there was questions and and media pressing to see how much autonomy Alvin's going to have um, going with Rutherford overseeing things. Rutherford will have the final say on a, on anything major happening, but uh, it sounds like Alvin's has the reins. Alvin has the reins to to. Uh, to, to guide guide the guide the Canucks going forwards, at least on the on the short term side of things, and I think he's going to. I think I think this even bumps back any trade talks uh, back a couple more weeks again, because Alvin and let let alone Alvin, but Alvin and Castanier uh, both need to be uh, see see what uh, this team is up for, up close and and personal, let alone. Uh, we still have we still haven't uh, really seen any anything tangible from Derek Clancy since he became in uh, and, and everything there. Mm-hmm. So I think in terms of the the management group uh, led by Rutherford and Alvin, I think they're going to be doing some just some more evaluations going forwards to see which players they may be looking to shop uh, come deadline or in the summer. Good. Yeah, I, I I don't don't have much else to say about him. Um, but uh, you know, like 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 I said before, just interested to see what his uh, man, managerial style style is going to be. So I'm stumbling on my words here. Uh, but it, overall, I, I'm just I'm really interested to see how he's going to. Once again, depending on how the Canucks do, what he's going to do in the off season and uh, at the trade deadline. Join us every Monday on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch, and subscribe wherever you get your audio for our Canucks Talk on the Shifts and Pucks podcast.